So, welcome to tutorial 14. We got past 13. We got past the unlucky number, and I guess the first thing that I need to do on the main module, because this is still tutorial 13, let's save this as a new file um, in the right folder. There we go. And just change this to 14. So that everything that we've done in uh, tutorial 13, as usual, um, will be safe. <laughs> Right, so tutorial 14, um, and I've got some lists, I've got some things on my list that I can actually say that I've done. Layers of the terrain, we did that last video, and I forgot to do my favourite thing in the world, which is to say done. Um, caves, we're going to have to kind of like come back to, because now we can kind of create layers, we can think about adapting our cave system. So, um, we need to check, update this to adapt the legacy, like the old uh, legacy system. Um, fog, dark and strange colour as we descend in height, that would be cool still. Um, done trees, although, oh yeah, I've got some other, oh here's my more in-depth, um, more in-depth uh, to-do list. So layers, depth in the terrain, that's done. Different material types and layers. Correct spawning when mining a built block. Yeah, we've got to look at that. Oh, I had an idea how to do that, and I've forgotten it. Improve block type selection via number keys. Oh, okay. Um, smooth performance when building. Combine trees for efficiency. And that's what I was going to do. Uh, improve uh, build tool and save file. Okay. Right. Um, I want to add some other things. 12. We want to do the um, axe animation. I think I mentioned that in the previous video. Um, and just before I forget something else, it's um, disable mega set system uh, for now. Um, let's go and just do that piece of coding first of all. So that takes place in our main module where I am now. Oh, before I forget, <laughs> 14. These are not necessarily in the order that we're going to do them. Um, but we want to have a random um, seed for the terrain and display seed with text. And that would be really useful. Having some text up on the screen is something that you want to do for, you could use it to show health or show your location or just messages to the player. You get um, a dialogue system kind of set up. So I definitely want to have a look at that in this video. Um, and, oh, what was it? What was it? No. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. The main thing was um, we need to update the walking slash gravity system uh, so that, well, I'll just say this bit, so that it works with X, Y, and Z. Capital Y because that's a bit that's missing. So remember our dictionaries that we're using for mining different layers because now we haven't just got the single layer where we didn't have to worry about the Y um, dimension. But now that we can go lower and or build higher, um, we can have terrain on top of terrain. So that Y dimension actually matters. But we're not taking that into account when we're walking around. So I've got that done in my uh, prepared code, but that's the main thing, um, and kind of attached to that, I'll call it 15.2, <laughs> okay, <laughs> this doesn't matter what numbers I put here, but um, it will bug me for some reason, uh, so 15.1 is to um, also um, incorporate um, building um, in the new system, uh, new mining system from the previous video, because at the moment I think we can build blocks but they're not really being recorded in a dictionary in the correct way, so um, if indeed we get the walking gravity system working with the, the Y dimension, then it's really important to incorporate the building system as well, else we'll build a block and then we won't be able to walk on top of it. Yes, so what I definitely want to do is maybe, yeah, from 12 to 15.1, um, yeah, 
is what I want to try and do in this video. But that's good. We've only done, you know, we've only talked for five minutes, <laughs> which is not too bad for me. Okay. So, oh, right. So what I wanted to show you, yeah, before I forget, Code and Craft, thank you so much for watching and commenting as well. Um, how about using a round range on the seed to get a random seed each time for our terrain? And Red Hen Dev, whoever that is, has said, yes, we should display the seed number on, t on the screen too using text. Um, good idea, says Coke. What a great conversation. We had a great conversation. Oh, let's, uh, do I go for a heart or do, you know, we don't want to give out hearts too, too cheaply. So, thumb up. Thank you, Code and Craft. Um, yes. And I think we've got some information on, yeah, oh, Code and Craft again, how about animating? Good ideas, Code and Craft. Any more ideas, just keep commenting, they're fantastic. Um, how about animating the pickaxe when mining by changing the rotation? And uh, Anush Tubakale, Anush, he's already given me a suggestion on GitHub with the code, so maybe I don't even have to do the code anymore, I can just copy and paste it. He won't incorporate it, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, We'll have a look. Now, it was only 11 hours ago, so I'm, I'm moving quite quickly. And actually, on GitHub, what is Anoush talking about? This is what he's talking about. Uh, replace the build and mine code in input function, and the new animation will work. Feeling good after that work. Oh, here it is. So he's put the code there, so I can get that. And here's, he's even put screenshots in here, thank you, Anoush, of it working. So there you go. You can see the, the axe is in that position, and now it's in that position. So when we're doing like some mining, that'll really, that'll look really cool. Okay, thank you, Anoush. So let's do, right, let's, where am I? I can't find what I was looking at. Let's look at the list again. What we want to do first is disable the Megaset system for now. That should be a quick job. So in our main PyCraft or whatever you've called your main module, um, we're going to go into, yeah, the generate terrain function, or gen terrain, I think it's called. There we are, gen terrain. And towards the bottom of the function, after we've combined things into a, a subset, We're then asking the question, is the current subset that we're working on um, the, the maximum number that we can have? If it is, then we create a new entity, a new mega set. We parent all the subsets so far to that mega set. And then we combine all the subsets, remember, and each subset contains loads of sub-cubes, or just individual terrain blocks, um, into that one mega set. And then the current subset is zero. Um, but we don't want to do that because, because our new mining system doesn't look, look through mega sets. It will only look through subsets at the moment. And so we need to do some more advanced things to, or not more advanced, just tricky things to, to look through the, the mega sets as well. Um, I, I, I feel like we'll just disable this for the moment. And yeah, it's okay if we just comment all of that out basically because if we've gone to, um, I was going to say, if we've gone too far, then our current subset will be zero again. Um, but no, that won't happen. So we've got to, <laughs> sorry, we've got to comment it out from here. Excuse my mouse, sorry. It doesn't make as much noise, hopefully, for you. So I use the three quotes. And then where it says print the mega set, we can put the three quotes again and that will comment out everything in between. So it's very easy to uncomment it again when we want to. But we would here, because if we've asked this question, we have to put something there. We could just put pass, 
But what we want to do is say, well, if you've reached the maximum number of subsets, then current subset um, equals zero again. And I think that will be fine. This will only be an issue anyway if, um, if we've reached the maximum number of subsets and, uh, and we've made like a big terrain. Let's just, because we might not ever encounter that doing our stuff because we're just at the moment using small terrains to fiddle around with the, the mining system. So in the future, if something goes wrong here, which it probably will, then we just need to give ourselves a message, uh, a debug message. So we'll just say, hey, is everything working? <laughs> um, and then, uh, maybe some stars to catch our attention in the future. Check the mega set stuff. <laughs> Smiley face. Okay, check the mega set. That's a horrible message. If you're writing this um, in your own code, something like that, improve it. <laughs> Do something better. Okay, so that's that sorted. Let's just run the code. Just remind ourselves what we're doing. Uh, the next thing, what should we do? Some more fun. I mean, the main job is to sort out the, the building bugs um, and get the, the walking, the gravity done. Yeah, let's do that first. And then, uh, I'm a bit confused why it's not running. That's taking a very long while to get started. Anyway, um, just stop generating the, the code for a moment. Oh, look how silky this is. Oh, the axolotl. What was his name? Oh, yeah, Baby. <laughs> baby the axolotl. Right. And Vincent. Um, oh, yeah, we can now mine, can't we? We can... mine as far down as we like. And I'm sorry that I'm very slow at mining because the controls need to be improved. Um, again, oh, that's a, a thing you can, if you're interested in contributing your own ideas, um, which you can do on YouTube or on the GitHub issues page, just tell me what your ideas are. Oh, there's a bug. Don't know how I did that. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, if you've got an idea for how to do the controls, um, by all means, um, write your suggestion. Okay, uh, I've forgotten what we're testing. Oh, I guess we're just looking at the system. There, I was just looking, it's... Hmm. I'm almost understanding why we've got that this gap bug happening. I'll have to test that with my um, prepared code as well, see if I've got the same thing. As far as I know, these are very similar, if not identical kind of systems. Okay, so for dessert, we'll do the, the animation and the seed, and the seed, um, the seed, random seed generation, right. I just got to do one thing at a time, or I forget what I'm talking about. Okay, so where do we, where do we put the seed in uh, the Perlin noise uh, function? Here we go. So I'm still in the main module, and near the top, noise equals Perlin noise octaves. We just want one, and then seed equals ninety nine at the moment. So let's put in one. And let's just have a look at what that does. Basically, it uh, Perlin noise usually works by placing you on a on a coordinate on an infinite plane. Oh yeah, this looks very different. It's like we're on the side of a mountain here, and we may get some erroneous gaps. These aren't caves from our legacy or our old system. 
I think if you stretch the Perlin noise a little bit, i.e. if your frequency is too low, then not enough, um, well it's basically, oh, whoops, I've fallen through some terrain. Um, let's keep the terrain going. Then, um, yeah, it, it, it like stretches the terrain like a skin, if you like, and because we're only one layer thick, sometimes some gaps will appear there. Yeah, so, so, the seed function kind of works okay. Right, and the other way that we could do the seed, the seed is that we just manually add our seed number to our X and Z location, because if I'm going this way, I'm probably moving on the Z axis. If I'm going perpendicular, 90 degrees, I'm now on the uh, X axis, something like that. And so this terrain that we're looking at, well, this is kind of cool with the trees, isn't it? I just got the feeling that we're, in, we're actually inside the world, which is nice. Um, yeah, we can just add, so if you just add a number to your X and Z location, when you're generating in the Perlin function, generate Perlin function, that will also work as a seed. Um, anyway, we can just do rand range. I think that's, or we'll use, um, I think it was Codecraft's idea to use random range. Yeah, let's use round range on the seed. Um, and I think it does have to be a whole number. So it's got to be a, an integer. So let's just try that. Int, just to make sure it's an integer. So whatever we put in the middle of here, if it's not an integer, it'll be made into an integer. <laughs> so a whole number. Um, and we want to say uh, round range. And then do we do a number from say one to three? Oh, it tells me. Start an integer, stop an integer, choose a random item from there. Uh, anyway. Let's just see if that works. And then, well actually, I want to know what our seed is. Can I just print that to the console? Can I just say um, seed? is plus, and now we need to convert this into a string, so just write str for string, and use the parentheses just like we did for int. So whatever in here, if it's not a string, it'll be made into a string. So we can put numbers in here and it'll work. So we can say noise.seed, and hopefully that will refer to whatever seed is there. And let's see what happens. Right, have a look at our terrain. So again, it looks like we've got a very steep mountain. Actually, I'll uh, turn the terrain on again. And that's a little bug. At the start of the game, when you're kind of like dropping in, it's very, very slow, but as soon as you press um, like a movement key, it speeds up again. Um, and I can't quite, I don't have a clear idea of why that's happening. So again, that's another thing you can comment if you can work out what's going on there. And maybe the fix to that would be, well, if we press like W to go forward and that speeds up the game, then maybe just move the player forward <laughs> at the start automatically. So to sort things out. Right. What we want to do though is, oh no, I've got to scroll all the way up to the start, presumably. Ah, there we go, to our message. Seed is one. So let's let's actually not run again and then have a look through there. Let's see if we can actually print some text onto the screen. So um, let's say seed, seed mouth. Seed mouth will be our text. And then you just write text, 
and then, well, there we go. Text equals what? Um, start tag, we don't need to look at that. Um, we might want a background on it. So I think we write text small t there equals, um, and we'll say seed. Actually, I want your seed, comma, today, comma, sir, is, and then I want a space, so we don't crush the, the number into that, is plus, and because I've got brackets here, I can just go on to the next line, that won't break Python. Um, and then again, like we did down here, actually I'll just copy that, or oh, I'll write it out again. So I want the noise seed, so I want the seed, but that will go wrong because that's a number. I can't concatenate or glue together a number with a string. I have to make this into a string. So to make that into a string, I write str and then wrap that number around with parentheses. I'm going to comment that one out because I don't need this in the console if this works. Right, so text is an Ursina function. So you need Ursina to, to, to refer to that. And basically, like a Perlin noise object, or where are other objects that we've made, or an entity is an object, or the Ursina kind of whole system is an object, um, the first person controller is an object, you, you'll notice they're all the same. They all start with a capital letter, and you assign them into a, a lowercase um, variable, and they end with parentheses. And basically, like our mining system, you do that when your object is made from a class. So all of those, like Asina, Perlin Noise, um, and Text, are all classes like this. And it's a convention to have a capital letter to start your class off. Um, and you use classes to make these objects. So we've got a text object called Seed Math. <laughs> um, and you can put some initial conditions for it. So the text will be the actual message that it displays. And then we want the background to be true. So I'm going to write that. And that means it's got a nice background. And actually, um, let's just leave the default color. And I think this might be in the middle of the screen by default, something like that. Anyway, let's just see if this works. Have some coffee. It's quite late at night, I shouldn't be having coffee. <gasps> it's working, our text is already working. You'll see today, sir, is two. Whoa, this is really steep. Wow. Till we go over here. That's a lot nicer. I like it in here. I like it in this little um, spot. This is nice. Let's see if we can... Uh, I'll just turn off the terrain. So it's a bit smoother, yeah. Press G to get some terrain. And look, there's no like trees in this little bit. There's trees surrounding me. And then uh, let's do some mining. Any diamonds? No diamonds. No diamonds there. I'll dig a bit deeper. Yeah. Okay. Right. What we can do, I just want to show you two things or three things with the text. One is how do you position it where you want to position it. Um, another thing is how do you make it bigger and how do you sort of sort out the colors. And also, what if you wanted it to print out like, da -da 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 -da, like that, like a little typewriter. Um, Petter Amland, who made a Cena and he probably programmed the, the text class has built in a, a little um, a system to do that. And I've done that in another project and I've got that here. So, oh yeah, you use these, whoops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you use these little triangles, chevrons, uh, it looks like HTML tags, um, to within the text string itself, to set the bold, the color, etc., of the of the text. So let's do that straight away. So let's just write pink, and we do want it bold. 
There we go, pink and bold. Not bold, not bold. <laughs> bold, to be nice and thick. And then we want to change the background colour. So to do that, we get hold of the, the object, the text object. Here I called it moo, my other, like a cow speaking in another project. And then you say background.color. So to get hold of the background's colour, we start with the text object, then the background, and then the colour, and then you can set whatever colour you want. So let's do that. So seed mouth dot background dot color equals let's make it kind of see-through transparent so I can write color dot remember American spelling red green blue and then alpha for transparency alpha is like the fourth number um, to refer to transparency um, so 255 would be fully opaque so you cannot see through it if it's 255 if it's zero you probably won't be able to see it at all so it'd be perfectly transparent so you want about halfway. So how much red? So it's pink, so I want to make the, the background kind of blue, I guess. So no red, maybe 20 green and loads of blue, or maybe 100 blue. And now finally, our alpha, let's go 100. So it's a little bit see-through. Um, let's see what that looks like. And actually, we'll make it twice as big. So seed mouth.scale. Um, let's just do times equals two, so it's twice as big. Let's just see if that works. Very good. So we've got our pink. The blue background, it's not, it's too see-through, isn't it? Um, next thing we want to do is to kind of like change the position. On the Ursina site, I'm on the cheat sheet here actually. I want to go to um, Ursina, ursinaengine.org. Again, made by Petter Amund. I haven't mentioned Petter for a while. Um, documentation. I want to go to coordinate system there we go and the UI so text doesn't sit in the world it sits on the camera basically um, so it's like a flat piece of paper right in front of you or a screen <laughs> and the coordinates are a bit strange the so zero zero is the middle of the screen um, let's try and put it top right then or top left would be nicer so X would be minus 0 0.5 ish but y, or the second number, would be 0 0.5. Let's try that. Um, so, uh, seed mouth dot um, position, or set position, do I use that? And then we'll say, um, was it 0 0.5? 5 minus 0.5 that feels like the wrong way around so minus 0 0.5 0 0.5 so negative positive and I put positive negative <laughs> negative positive and then if that works the final thing I want to do is do the little uh, oh float object is not subscriptable so this set position is not right how did I do it in my other one? Oh, I just used I just used X and Y. So X equals minus 0.5 and C math dot Y equals 0.5. And I didn't want as much transparency, so let's go to 222, 222. Remember the maximum is 255 to make it completely opaque. And uh, oh yes, so the last thing is like the typewriter thing. Oh brilliant. We definitely changed the position. Um, it's a little bit high. 
and I might want it a little bit more to the left. So let's try 0.52 and one a bit lower, so presumably 0.4 and then it's a little bit big isn't it? So I'll go 1.4 And the colours are terrible. I might go orange background, white foreground. Okay, that's nice. And I do want it. Yeah, okay, I'll leave the position like that. <laughs> but the colour, background colour, let's just say colour cure colour dot orange and then white writing. That should look pretty cool. And then how did I do the uh, typewriter effect? Oh yeah, so if we just write the, the text object's name appear, and we can set a speed. So 0.15 seems pretty good, apparently. So seedmouth.appear, um, what did I say? <laughs> 1.5, speed equals 1.5. I think the, the higher you go, the slower it will kind of appear. You, your, yeah, that's way too slow, isn't it? Did I put 1.5? Oh, 0 0.15. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> Isn't my memory shocking? It's like a few seconds ago. I can't even remember a few things. Okay. Your seed today, sir, is one. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Codecraft, thank you very much for this idea about the seed. So that's there. We've kind of added this to the main module and we don't want to be doing that. I need to tidy that up at some point. Um, but I'm not going to do that now. I don't have time for that now. So let's just put down here uh, 16. 16. Um, add seed stuff to its own module. Thank you. Save. Um, right, the main thing that we've got to do, oh, half an hour, we've already like done some stuff. Um, so our treat is to get the, the axe animated, animation done, uh, but the main thing that we've got to do is, yeah, sort out the the mining system. So the one of the first things is, getting the build working correctly. Um, and I think the key thing was to record um, the position of our um, newly spawned block. And actually, I'm just going to copy this piece of code. So on the terrain dictionary, it records the current height of this built block. Oh, here we go. Place a block at the build tool entity's position. If this build mode is minus one returns, so you've got to be in build mode to actually build stuff. Um, e equals entity model Q. I think that wants to be a a moon. Yeah, moon cube. So uh, this dot. Cube model, that's what we want. I've just put this onto a new line. We want everything consistent with what we're kind of spawning. Uh, position equals this BT position. Collider is a block. Now we don't really want a collider on it, but maybe that would be useful. Um, texture, yeah, needs to be the stone. To, or actually, Actually, what we want to do is say this dot uh, build text, isn't it? To be consistent. However, um, for testing, it might be useful to see where those are. So, actually, 
I will keep the texture consistent with our other spawned blocks from the previous video is what I'm talking about when we're um, mining a hole and then spawning a, a layer below and then the four um, cave walls this thing do you remember from um, part 13 um, I want to be consistent with that and they were using the cube model and the build texture um, we also need to, while I remember, scale times equals 0 0.99999, I think it was, um, in order to correctly correctly um, grab the vertices. I'm just now looking for that number. Am I back in? Yeah, shrink spawn blocks so that it matches the size of ordinary terrain. Um, yeah, I've got the same number of nines. I should probably have recorded this number somewhere. I've just lost my build function. I think it's underneath, there we go, it's underneath the mining thing. Yep, that's exactly the same. I just pasted it over the top. Right, just talking about being able to spot these when we're building. Um, the colour will set to, um, I think it's four, like netherite. So I'm just going up to the initialization. Uh, Netherite is four. Um, so this is bad, me having to remember this. Um, I kind of updated the system, which is kind of like, well, I should replace that with enums. Okay. Let's add that to the to-do list. Where are we? Um, it's probably more like 16.0. So you're going to have to be 16 point. Actually, you're separate, separate issue. Um, enums for block types uh, well, wait, mining system uh, mine spawn so I've got to go down here to build ah. oh I had something copy didn't I but but I've overwritten the, the copy. I needed the um, recording of the position. Ah, and it's right there. It's just above where I need to be anyway. That was the key thing. So we've made it small enough. We've just set the color arbitrarily to netherite so we can so they look black so we can see them. Um, I've commented out what we don't need. And shaking that will be a problem because these need to be combined, don't they? In yeah, these need to be in the builds dictionary, not the builds dictionary, the builds entity. So parent equals this dot builds, and we then need to e dot um, sorry this dot builds combine. Now once we've done that, combine actually destroys this temporary block. Um, it's just added to the whatever terrain, uh, mine blocks or cave walls and things and built blocks that we've made. So E won't exist anymore, so we can't shake it anymore. We'd have to do that somewhere else. Um, let's just make a note to ourselves. Shaking animation won't work since we are destroying the temp block, and that's in the combine function. So you know what's going on there, but we'll keep it there because I quite like the shake. So maybe we can figure out a way to do that. Okay.
So this means, because, this is a crucial thing, because we're parenting our, our built block to the builds entity and then we're combining it into that, when we mine, we're actually looking through the builds model at all the vertices, which will include, therefore, anything we've built, and we should be able to mine at that location. Ah, but we've got to record its um, the fact that we're doing it, its position. So record new use form block, or it's a built block, we're calling this, on dictionary. And, oh, x, y, z, so this is going to be bte dot x, bte dot y, because we're, we're building wherever the, the build tool is, its position, and it's this dot, because we're in our class, or if you're doing things correctly in Python, it'll be self dot, not this dot, or whatever keyword you've used for your member variables, your class variables, equals e dot y. Yeah, because its position will be the BTE uh, position, which I set up here. Good, 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 good. Um, well, actually, I could then just say E dot X, E dot Y, because it's already been set to the BTE's position. So I don't need to refer to that twice. Okay, both would have worked, I presume. Um, but now I'm just thinking, we had that bug, didn't we? If I build something and then if I mine it, in here it goes, oh, it, it thinks I'm like digging down into the earth, so it's like I need to generate new layers. And we don't want to do that if we're building, say, up in the air. Which I think Minecraft gets past. Does this reveal why in Minecraft you can't just build stuff in the air? You have to be like you. You always have to be like attached to something else, because then, like now, if I if I um, like mine here. Now that I've done that, um, because it's attached to something, it doesn't matter that we've spawned things. In fact, it's a good thing that we spawn cave wall so it looks like we've got layers. Whereas if I build up here, oh, <laughs> if, I could, if I could have done, what have I done here? Line 68 in input, oh yeah, that's where we're calling it. it line 188, color equals four. Oh. I was probably talking as I was doing that and made a, an error. Uh, mine is just, yeah, color equals four. <laughs> Sorry. I wanted this block types index four. So that gets his netherite. And I better just uh, netherite color four. Testing. Actually, I don't like the winky face. Very important. There we go. So let's try that again. Um, also, I didn't like that seed. <laughs> I hate being on the side of a mountain. I think we should try seeds in the range 99 to 111, something like that. So we're on seed number two. There we go, right, F. You can kind of put any seed you want now. You could put a really long number that's like your birthday or something, and it'll, and it'll be your birthday terrain. It'll be like unique, well, to you and anyone else who's birth, uh, born on that day, I guess. Um, I guess what could you do to make a really unique seed? You could like convert your name to numbers and then your birthday. And then maybe one more random thing. Sorry, one more. Uh, determined thing connected to your identity and that would really be your you could even do it to somehow your DNA code you can convert to numbers couldn't you and then you'd be like walking across your 
DNA terrain. That'd be amazing. Right. What we're, what on earth are we doing with? Oh yeah, we can mine. Sorry, I was trying to build. Okay, and we've got nether, right? <laughs> what black cube? And what happens? Let's just do another one. Okay, we've got two. So I don't think you can do that in Minecraft. So it'll be cool if we if we're making like a super Minecraft, which is obviously nowhere near as good <laughs> as the actual Minecraft, but. Maybe we could improve it in some ways. Because we can do what we like. We can do what we like in this uh, version. Um, we could build anywhere we like. Unless I've got that wrong. I don't really play that much Minecraft. <laughs> oh, right. So I just mined, and that's our problem. So it deletes the object, spawns one below it, and then, if there's no like terrain, no gaps anywhere near those positions, it spawns in there. So we don't want that to happen if it's kind of up in the air. So let's just think, I'll briefly think. One test we could do is, is kind of iterate all the, sorry, pointing at the camera, it's a bit scary. We could um, iterate down all those positions and say, is there some terrain below you? Well, if there is, don't, um, don't spawn. But then again, if we're building really high in the air, how, we'd have to iterate down all the way. Instead, I think we need to just use our dictionary and say, if this is built somewhere, then you don't need to spawn things around it like that, ever. Because logically, I think, if we're down in a mine, let's say, if we're down here, and I built some netherite there, if I delete that there, we'd, n we'd always have terrain walls there because there'd always be terrain up. So if I'm like mine there, let's go even further down and then build some netherite. So I've already had to mine to that depth. I've just lost my control, there it is. So if I just mine now, yeah, no problem. So What I'm thinking is, in our mining system, instead of recording the height there, could we re record um, B? Now, presumably, if we've got hold of this dictionary entry, this value, then we know what its height is, so we don't really need to get it from there. Okay, so in our mining function, um, we do want to do that. Oh yeah, we only want to look on the build. The things that we've... Yeah, okay. So things that we've built won't appear on the in the subset. So we, we're only looking at this little bit of code. So mine spawn, we don't want to do. So we can just say, if... And now we need the get function. Maybe I can just copy this and adapt it. I can't find it. Yeah. If this.t dictionary 
get, and then you use parentheses, not the square brackets, and let's just align all of our uh, strings. And we must be talking about the BTE's position. So we remember we're in the mine function, so we can say bte.x, bte.y, bte, and it's, sorry, this dot, I forgot, or self dot, if you're doing things correctly, Python uh, convention. Although it did, Python has just been different, wasn't it? All the other programming languages that I know of use this dot, like Java uses this dot, obviously uh, JavaScript uses this dot. Yeah, um, anyway, um, why is that incorrect? Oh, right, we haven't finished that. What are we say? If, let's just go to a new line. So if you use a slash, if you need a new line in Python, equals, or does not equal B, then, you can go to mine spawn model. We do need to generate because we are going to generate ma makes this difference actually happen. So we fiddled around, we've destroyed the block by just moving all its vertices off into space. So 9,999 high, which would be really weird. If you go and fly up there, you'll presumably be able to find all these weird deleted uh, vertices, which is a terrible idea, isn't it? <laughs> Again, in the comments, if you can think of a way to actually delete the vertices without destroying the the, the entities or distorting them, that would be fantastic. Um, so we do need to do generate, so that deletes the, the block essentially. And then we want to combine it for the new newly spawned block, but we're not doing that. So we've got to ask this question again. Gain really. Oh, yeah. Let's just be lazy. Mm. You know what? I'll just leave it like that. It, it shouldn't harm things if. Okay, sorry. Um, we'll set. We'll use a, a little, uh, like a little switch. We'll say um, uh, built block built block equals true. No false. And then we'll say down here. Should I go and combine because we've newly spawned some blocks? We'll say if build block. is uh, true, sorry, false, we go and do that. <laughs> I've completely messed this up. If it's a build block false, go and combine it, yeah, so build block, yeah, it does Yeah, build block is false. <laughs> there. there we go. So if we're we're going to mine spawn, we're spawning stuff, build block needs to be false. Okay. <laughs> I made that a lot harder than it needed to be. Right, so I just did all of that, that build block stuff, so that we don't have to call the dictionary again or repeat that code there. And because this is quite sensitive, I remember from the last video, doing the generate function and then calling the combine function. We have to do it in that order, else we get big problems. But anyway, we must go and test that now because I fiddled around with that, so I may be causing these big problems again. Plus, uh, that code was uh, terrible. <laughs> oh, and I need, right, I can't stand these uh, seeds for testing. 
let's go, uh, I'm in the main module again, where we're doing the seeds. So random range, let's go from 99, which is nice, to, what did I say, 111, which is, I love that number, 111. Right, one on one. What's that in binary? One plus two, that's three, plus four, that's around seven. Okay. Oh, what have we got? Oh, we're in, this is 103, which, guess what? It's a great big size of a mountain again. But at least um, it's not too stretched. That's something we have to look at, don't we? These stretch gaps, because it destroys the illusion of there being uh, layers. Well, you can kind of see Vincent in the, you can see a giant chicken hidden it's like Attack on Titan or something, hidden in the terrain. Ah, can we mine to Vincent? Vincent. So we can do our testing. So mining is still working. I won't generate any more terrain, so it's a bit smoother. Vincent, we're mining to you, very slowly. We definitely have to upgrade this system. Vincent. And how many more? Oh, there's our bug. Okay, I didn't manage to get to Vincent, but I'm going to give up that because we're supposed to be testing. So I'm testing, if I build a block, that should have recorded its position, uh, not its position, but it's um, the fact that it's a built block by the value at that um, at that dictionary key, which is kind of defined. Well, it is defined built by a location. It will its value will be b, meaning don't go and spawn some blocks. But however, let's go and have a look. Ah! Brilliant, it didn't spawn anything. Try that one, brilliant. What about this guy at the bottom? Fantastic, okay, let's just do one there and try him. Brilliant, it's working. We've accomplished a lot in this video. Hopefully, I, okay, we've got two minutes, <laughs> two minutes left. Um, a really important thing that we've got to do, can I do this within an hour? I can't do this within an hour, but um, Unless I copy and paste my prepared code, let's try and do that. Uh, different material like correct spawning with mining, a built block, correct spawning. Yes! Oh my god. Sort that out. Improved block type selection, no. Smooth points when building, combined trees with it, improved build tool, no. Save file, axe animation. Oh, we wanted to do that. Disable mega set system for now, that's done. Random seed for the terrain, that is done. Uh, and we displayed the seed with text. Update walk graphic. That's what I want to do now. Incorporate building in the new mine system. That's what we've done. Ah, oh, fantastic. So let's go and have a look at my prepared code. Um, in yeah, generate shell. Um, oh, I've written some <laughs> pseudo code to myself. So first bias stepping up. So that means. We could have built stuff, or we could have like mined down, so it's like, and we might have, um, we might have therefore cubes on top of other cubes, on top of terrain and things like that. So should we be going down or should we be going up? Because there'll be lower cubes. Do I look at those positions or do I look at the highest position to see what I do? So I'm saying first by stepping up. So just look at the, the top thing first and see if you can step up. So first check whether there are any blocks above us and less or equal to the step height. And I think the step height was five to begin with, but three is probably a bit more realistic. If yes, lurk to there as the target height. If no, then the second check whether there are any blocks below us and below us and yeah, that should be less or equal to the step height kind of below us. If yes, lurk to there. If neither, then just use gravity, so just four. So yeah, if 
there's nothing to step onto and there's nothing like below us that we can step down to then just four so it must be um, there must be nothing that we can land on step down to nota bene or note well important point that we have to iterate time step height during our check of terrain cubes above and below subjects current position so let's just see how I do that step height is three gravity on is true so we presume that we're just falling so we'll switch that off if we um, discover anything that we need to right so I in range oh um, target height is just the subject's height so we'll just say we want you to lurk or move to your just current height so don't fall or do anything weird just stay at your current height if you can't work out what to do but then we say for I in range step height to the minus step height minus one so what that does is starting at your step height um, to minus the step height and iterate going minus one so normally you don't have you don't have to put that third parameter in there it will just go from zero to one to two to three to four but what if you wanted to go backwards from like a bigger number to a smaller number then you have to put this third parameter minus one and then you can go backwards by one if you wanted to skip go by two you can put minus two we only just want to do minus one so what y is trained at this position um, and we're oh yeah so we're finding the height here and I guess the height will be um, I will be floored subject Y plus I that will be the height there because we've got the information within the value actually um, because I'm just thinking about that because in our new build system we're not just recording heights we're also recording B gap um, or the height or a number so if terra does not equal none and terra does not equal gap then it must be either a height so target y equals terra plus two so that's our uh, player's height but actually we don't want terra because it's not always going to be a number what we want is subject y plus i okay um, anyway then we say the gravity speed equals zero so that means we're we're we've stepped on up to ground or we've stepped down to ground so we're grounded so gravity speed should be zero and then gravity on should be false and then we can break that means we don't need to iterate over checking how high or low the terrain is again we start high so we've, we're biased towards checking stepping up first if we found a place then gravity's off target y to where we're going to move to is that height of that found block and then we're going to break out of this loop because we found our target height to go to um, then we're just saying if gravity's on which is not if we found somewhere then this is the old um, code that we've already done else and here's where we use the old code for lerping so subject y equals lerp so move smoothly to the target y which we determined in this new stuff here um, and there's a speed reset gravity speed um, oh and we've already got that gravity speed equals zero there so we don't need that twice actually okay so let's take all of that and hopefully just a little bit of tweaking and it and we'll get something working because at the moment we can mine but we're the, ter the terrain is not being changed in terms of where we're walking so we can't get down into the, the holes and things like that so I want to find generate shell this is a new gravity system or well, now it's the 
the new old one. So we want to, let's just comment this out. And just say that this is the um, ah the new old system and this is the new new system which I'm very happy about although it's not working yet. Oh yeah, the other thing we've got to do is, yeah, this sub-dictionary doesn't exist here, does it? Um, anyway, uh, it exists inside our mining system. What did we call it? Varch. Did we call it Varch? I can't remember. What on earth is our... Oh, there we go. Oh, our mining system is called Varch. I remembered it. Excellent. Um, now I need to go back to generate shell. Okay. So Varch, and now it wants to be the uh, T dictionary, terrain dictionary, get. All of these can stay the same. If Terra does not equal none, and Terra does not equal gap, so therefore it's going to be B or a number. And then we can say in both cases it equals um, Lord um, subject dot Y plus. I uh, plus two, so that would be the height of the block that we found. And then we can break gravity on. Hopefully, all this gravity system is exactly the same. That might be it. Oh my god, that might be it. Okay, I'm gonna change step height to three. Obviously, you can fit all your own parameters. You could step up 20 if you wanted to. Okay, let's go. Oh, oh I have got some. I thought I had no coffee left. My lucky coffee. Okay, it's not breaking yet. Oh, we're falling. Gravity's working still. And we've hit the ground. <laughs> oh. F, no, G to switch off the terrain, and yes, we're still walking on the terrain. I know that doesn't seem amazing, but we have just commented out all of the terrain walking uh, code. Okay, let's try and mine. Oh, okay. So, can I actually walk? Oh, oh no! That feels like I'm... Now, I don't know whether I'm just... Let's try an experiment here. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's worked. Huh. No, it feels like I'm there. It hasn't worked. I don't think it's worked. I have no idea why. Does that mean we're maybe just using the old terrain system? The old, like, gravity system, I should say. So I've built a pretty substantial, built, 
I've mined a pretty substantial hole there. And I'm not able to pull down it for some reason. horrible gaps. <laughs> no, it's not working. Let's just go and have a look. A look here. Let's save this. Um, the first thing that I want to try is so just look, I, I am in the right module. Yeah, Varch Dictionary Get. Let me just. Apologies, I just uh, paused. Welcome back. Um, I had a little think about what uh, may be going on here. Uh, what was I doing? In the main module, I was just making sure there were no mistakes in the code here. Okay, um, so I think that's okay, and that was working. So all I can think that is happening is that in our mining system, when we delete or mine a block, do we change the the dictionary? So we've got record. We've got to record that there's a gap. Um, I remember talking about gaps, I talked about gaps, but have I actually implemented that? So mining, here we go. So in the build model, so that, remember, contains any um, cube that we've actually built, block that we've built ourselves, um, which we've done this video, and the previous video, um, it's the cave walls that were spawning. Um, so move vertex height there, so we've actually destroyed it there. And then, yeah, we don't, oh, we don't actually change the, the dictionary value. <laughs> okay, so that's why. Um, good. So note that we've made a change. And uh, yeah, record, I guess we'll call this, uh, now it doesn't equal B, it equals gap. And that wants to be at the list.btex. And I can just copy and paste that in there. Record newly, record new gap on dictionary. Oh, that may be why we're getting some of the, the bugs in like gaps, like actual gaps appearing in in the walls when we're mining, because we shouldn't, oh no, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe th th this will help. Okay, so, yeah, I've said the BT position because it's where we've actually mined. I'm gonna say, okay, there's now a gap there. Um, and then we've got to do the same, presumably, yeah, down here when we iterate over the actual terrain. Um, just make sure, yeah. So I can actually, just to make this, okay, I'll leave, I'll leave in the commentary just because it might help us in the future. Um, and we'll do it in a similar place there. Record new gap on dictionary. There we go. I don't like the fact that we're kind of repeating this code. I should refactor this so we only have to do this like once because if I have to update any of this, I have to update it twice or remember to update it twice and that's when things will get out of hand. But at the moment it's not too complicated but um, I should think about that. Okay. Oh, and just a reminder, mystery of the 36 vertices. Why are there 36 vertices? I've got a theory. Maybe it's because our moon moon cube model, which 
isn't a, a, a simple cube provided by Ursina. We made it in block bench, so maybe if it's got 36 vertices, that means that each side of the cube, so it will have six faces, I should say. Maybe each face is somehow made up of six vertices. So six times six is 36. That's the best um, I've got. Maybe you could investigate. Maybe someone could load up the moon cube model somewhere and investigate how many vertices it's got. I think I could do that on here. We could use, we could just go, yeah, load up the moon cube model vertices, iterate round. How many times did you have to look to go round? Or just count the length, sorry. We just wrap all of this in the length. Um, maybe remind me to do that in the comments for the next video or something, or I'll do it and then just pin the result as the highest comment or something on this video. Uh, anyway, I will forget that. So, you know, I forget things after about three seconds, as you witnessed many times. So please remind me in the comments. That'd be great to, for me to do that little test. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just say, do the 36 vertices test. <laughs> And that will remind me what to do. Okay, uh, now I've forgotten what, what we were doing. Okay, I think we've just, in the mining system module, we've updated what we needed to update so that we're actually recording where we're deleting uh, terrain or build blocks. Um, no, G to turn off, right. Oh, this is nice terrain. Oh, it's 99. <laughs> That's why, 99 is really nice. And yeah, we've got the Axolotl and Vincent in their correct places. Let's just generate a bit more terrain. Yeah, things aren't actually working as smoothly as uh, we're used to them now that we're generating trees. Definitely want to revisit that. Also, if you haven't tried this, um, do like download the model of a tree or generate a more interesting model of a tree and then spawn those in. Um, things look really good that way. This is a such a this is such a great terrain. I'm sorry, it's just amazing. Okay, right, G to stop uh, generating the terrain and then F to go to build mode. Let's just build some things to see if that's working. I'll leave a gap there for no reason. And can I mine them? <laughs> yes, I can mine them, but it should not have done that. What have I changed? What did I do to make that go wrong? I've got an idea, it's something to do with the dictionary. What's gone on there? That's bizarre. Okay, that's interesting. Right, um, also, I think I've got an idea actually. Maybe it's because you have to mine first before that will work properly. Now let's try and mine this one. No, okay, that's my theory, wrong, okay. Um, mine lower down, mine lower down, and the question is, yeah, can we now go down in, into these, into these caves that we're generating? Still got a little problem there. <gasps> it's worked. We can now fall into our uh, caves. That we generated. Oh, or can we? Oh, there we go. That was a little difficult to get in there. So there's something, yeah, there's something not quite right. If I am in there, can I? Where am I? This is not too successful. 
Um, right, what I'll do is just, sorry, I'll pause it, do some digging so you don't have to watch me do that really slowly, and then um, see what's going on. Um, oh, but I have to come out of the game to do that. <laughs> Damn. Um, okay, I'll try that. See you in a moment. Okay, um, I didn't actually dig a big hole and like test or anything like that. I was looking at the code, and I think it's this line um, I'm not happy with. It's something like the and. It, if it... Let's just go through this. So... So there's nothing above us, and let's just imagine we've, we've dug down 10 below. So we want to actually fall. Um, yeah, we, sorry, uh, we want to fall. Um, then if it doesn't equal none, so either equals a number or um, or b or gap. But then we say and it doesn't equal gap. So it can equal b or a number. Then so a built block or a number. Then yeah, we do want to make gravity false. And we want to go to the correct place. Okay, so that, that's fine. But what if we've got a gap here? Then it will just, yeah, keep going. It's like, no. Um, gravity will still be on. Gravity on its true. Okay. So let's say we want to step down one. Um, we've just dug like a, a, a pit one unit down. Um, so there's nothing above us, and we've gone like one, and then it says gap at our present height. But yeah, then it ignore it and it'll go to the next one down. And that will say, yeah, height. So it hmm. So that should just be recorded, um, yeah, in Varch, where we're, yeah, when we're in the subsets, looking through those vertices, I'm sure we do this. We record the new gap, but then we, we so it'll be a mind spawn with it. This is good pro better programming, so I've made mind spawn, so we only have to check that once. Record newly spawned block on the dictionary. Oh, and it won't be B-T-E-Y, it will be, um, E Y. Oh, is that a problem? Let's have a look. So it looks like 
a bug because I was copying and pasting some code and not thinking about what I was doing. So that'll be from the previous, so tutorial 13. Um, G to stop. This looks really nice. Oh, remember 109? 99 is good, 109 is good. There's something about the nines. Okay, uh, let's dig here. Let's say, yeah, I wanna get this piece of train out of the way to make this path kind of thicker. Now the question is, can I just walk? Yes, I can walk there. Very good, and then step up there. Yes, okay. So, so at the moment I'm stepping up here, but if I do some mining, or really just landscaping, I'm just landscaping. And now, do not step up there, brilliant. But can I dig a hole and then go and live in there? Can I go and live in a hole, that's the thing. Um, it's quite it's quite difficult, isn't it, to see the holes because it's all the same texture. It'd be great to, like we've done with the terrain, just vary the, the shade of spawn blocks. We can do that randomly. Oh, and we've fallen in, although the clash detection is slightly off on the position. So there I'm standing on the corner block, apparently. And now, yeah, I'm right down in the hole. Oh, this is really fun. <laughs> Just such a simple thing. That's interesting. When you've actually coded it, created it yourself, you know, you wouldn't even think about this if it were just in like Minecraft or some other game. You're just down there, you just, you know, the illusion's complete. But once you've made it, it feels real in the sense of we've, I don't know, <laughs> we've seen it not working and then it worked. Anyway, that's great. We can get down in holes. Oh, fantastic. That's the main thing. So that's that solved. And for now, I haven't done much testing there, have I? But there's a little bit of a bug. Let's just go to the top. And this is about when I needed to, to finish this video. Um, different material types, improved block section. Uh, where are we? Update the walking and gravity system. Done. Um, we do we do have a little bit of a problem here. We'll say fifteen point zero one um, clash detection slightly off. Um, not. I'll improve that. I'll just say. Um, subject not aligned with um, terrain perfectly, question mark, there we go, so a little bug to look at. Again, if you can work out the solution with some testing, let me know. It might be to do with the fact that we're kind of in zero, zero, so like the bottom left of the, grit, the, the terrain position, and actually we need to be 0.5 across the cube. Um, so that would be, yeah, in, yeah, the gravity system, we need to add like 0.5 or something like that. I'm not going to try that right now. Um, let's just make a note for ourselves here. Do we just add 0.5 to both X and Z in gravity system, there we go, um, hopefully I'll look at that next um, video, so it's been almost 90 minutes, what is that, one hour and a half, that's definitely long enough, we don't want to go two hours or anything for this video, so we sorted out those things, um, I didn't get to the axe animation, next video, axe animation, and now we've done the, the most difficult thing, we can now play around with different um, block types, have actual caves. Um, wonderful, actually 
fix the, the, the bugs with the terrain and that kind of stuff, with the cave walls. Wonderful. I'll go and do some testing in the background. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully um, I enjoyed this one. It, 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 it wasn't too bad. And we've got some key stuff working. Um, hopefully you, you enjoyed it too. Have a lovely evening if you're in the evening or enjoy the rest of the day if you're, if you're watching in the morning or if you're a werewolf, you know, just take it easy. Just take it easy. Thank you very much. Goodbye.